If you're focused on providing behaviors and features within your system, you might want to start organizing your code by those features instead of technical concern. Here's the reasons why I do it and how. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So when I say technical concern, what do I really mean? Well, there's kind of two different ways to look at this is if you're looking at a kind of a layered approach that a lot of applications take, let's say we're creating a web app and we're using ASP.NET Core MVC, whether you're using views or you're serializing and just really creating an HTTP API, regardless, you're gonna have controllers, controller actions, view models. So let's say that's the, the top piece. Let's say you have in these gray parts, these could be any layers, how you term them. You may have some type of authorization layer. Maybe you're doing that within MVC, who knows? You may have some data access layer. Maybe that's entity framework. And then from there, you have some business logic layer that ultimately changes the state of maybe entities or something. And then you have a database. But each one of these um, in the gray and including MVC are organized this way in your projects. So you may have a solution with a project or folder specifically for data access. You have a project or folder specifically for all your business logic. And then obviously when we're talking about MVC, we know that how that goes. So one thing when you start kind of ordering everything by technical concern and the problem I have with it is kind of the navigation discoverability of everything that pertains to a feature or something that you're working on. So on the eShop on web, I'm mean, using kind of a really old commit here just to kind of illustrate this. But if I go over to the web project and let's say the first thing I need to look at is something with this manage controller. Now, the first thing that stands out to me is what the heck is manage controller? That describes nothing to do of what the, the features are, the behaviors, what this actually does. I don't even know what manage controller does at a glance. If I have to go into the file, okay, now I see it probably has something to do with accounts, like user accounts. So let's take a look at this change password. So we have change password that does what exactly? We have a change password view model. So let's see where that lives. Of course, that lives in the view models folder under manage. And if I were to guess, where does this, where else is this view model used? I have not looked before. I'm gonna do find usages and I'm gonna bet my money on one place, which is the place we were just looking at. Find usages and yes, correct. It's only used in one place, which is the method that we were just looking at, the change password. So again, this one, oh, actually even let's take a look at the view itself. So if we click on the view, I can see that the View lives in, guess you guessed it, views manage change password. And this file in all likelihood is only used in exactly one place, which is here. So we're jumping around folders to, you know what I mean? To kind of deal with this same feature, which is changing your user's password. To me, it makes no sense. I would rather these things be close together in the same folder, even better within the same file. So the way I like to think about this is, let's say you have a boundary, an application, a service, however you want to call it, and you think of it like a cake, a layered cake, where the entire cake is your service or your boundary, and within that you have all these different layers that represent technical concerns. That's what I think about of having kind of an application or service-wide um, way of layering things and organizing your code that way. What I much rather prefer doing of thinking of it as taking just a slice out of that cake, exposing all those layers and letting all those layers actually live together within that piece. That piece for me is the feature or is the behavior that you want to expose. It's the functionality, but having the things that are uh, relate to each other be organized and live together in the same spot. So I'll show you how I do that. So I'm back on the eShop on web and I've done this at a couple different places and I'll show you, for example, the kind of MVC with a razor view method of this. So in web, I now have a folder called features and inside that I have accounts and send verification email. Take a guess on what this file does. 
sends a verification email. <laughs> I have my orders and we'll take a look at get my orders or get my orders handler. So the idea here is I put everything in one place. If you are the type of person that despises the idea of having more than one class in a file, there's really nothing stopping you from creating your controllers file and putting it in this folder, your handler putting it in this folder and kind of separating them out that way. I still prefer having everything in one file just because it's easy to navigate. You're just in one file. So what I have here is I have my controller, MVC controller. And if you've seen any of my pre previous videos on why I use Mediator, I'll have a link in the description, but I'm using it here. So there is Mediator is just calling get my orders with just, this is just a kind of a Mediator request. And this class, guess where it lives? Right alongside this. So here's the class for get my orders. And it returns this handler on how it fulfills this is gonna return the my orders view model Guess where that lives? Right below it as well. And this has a order summary view model, which lives directly right here. And then our actual implementation um, is right here, which is returning kind of that view model. But everything lives directly within inside this file. Now this view, the actual razor view, guess where it lives? Right next to this particular handler. So I have the actual razor view directly here. Uh, the only difference with my get order details is it's kind of the exact same thing. I've separated the request out, but the request could easily live with, within this handler. But the idea being is it just kind of showing that I have one class per handler in this particular case. It's not with all with, with inside one file. Again, my preference is kind of putting everything in one file, but that's really up to you, whether you do it by file or put everything into one folder. So again, when you start looking at this features folder, you can see by looking at the actual folders or the files, what the actual functionality is, what the behavior is, um, what you're actually trying to do, what the application does, rather than looking at controller names and jumping around files. When you start organizing by feature and putting everything close together, it's not that you're just not jumping around anymore. It's that when you're looking to make a change to an existing feature, you're going to one place. You're not jumping around files, projects. You're going to one place generally. Yes, you're gonna have shared concerns, like maybe some underlying domain model or data model that you're using with Entity Framework, and that's okay. You're not gonna have everything in one single file or folder. The other really interesting piece of this is when you're starting to add new functionality, you're generally creating one file or one folder that represents that piece of functionality. You're not modifying existing service classes or in going to different various layers or different projects to kind of add various parts to that functionality. You're adding it in one solo place generally, which makes conflicts with what you're dealing, other teammates are dealing with. Um, there's just so many benefits to just having to go to one place, especially when, again, when you're focused on what's the functionality of your system and less concerned about adding all these little pieces here and there because you've organized it by technical concern. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. If you enjoyed this topic or other topics around software architecture and design.net, please subscribe. Thanks.